Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed forecast update for Thursday the 1st of May 2025. A lot to crack through today, rainfall up in far north Queensland expected to pipe up from tomorrow night and it could be heavy in quite a few places, especially along the Cassidy Coast but also up into the Daintree. Will Cairns get any rainfall and will locations down to the Whit Sundays and towns will get any rainfall? Well it's still a bit of a waiting game to see what is going to be happening uh, up there. Uh, you can see that the winds have swung out of the southeast now so the rainfall is definitely inbound and people have have been making those comments as well that the rainfall or it definitely feels like some of the rainfall is inbound and we've also got that upper level trough which is bringing in cloud through north queensland and a few showers also through north queensland as well and this just looks like classic rainfall setup now for north and far north queensland and whilst we're not expecting anything crazy in the way of significant rainfall accumulations we're not talking about 500 or even a thousand millimeters of rainfall coming through for this time of the year and for how quick the rainfall is expected to fall certainly some heavy accumulations are possible let's get into the details of this right now now already you can see a few showers moving up and the chance of rainfall is going to be there throughout the remainder of today. The Whit Sundays are going to have that chance of rainfall as well. I'm going to see if I can encapture both uh, Far North Queensland down to the Whit Sundays in the same frame and you can see those showers expected to increase a little bit later on tonight and into early tomorrow morning. The rainfall will pick up in Far North Queensland by late at night after about 6 or 7 o'clock at night but it will really begin to pick up around midnight tonight and we're expecting some pretty solid showers to be moving ashore through early tomorrow morning. There'll be a brief lull in the rainfall through mid uh, morning tomorrow uh, up in far north Queensland along the Cassidy Coast but then it'll fire up again through tomorrow evening. Plenty of heavy showers and maybe even a convergent zone or two firing up uh, somewhere between Cardwell up towards Innisfail. It certainly does look like that's where the heaviest rain is going to be around Innisfail and Tully or a little bit further north and through Friday night that rainfall is going to be quite heavy. Light to moderate showers expected down on the Whit Sundays as well. They'll be few and far between but still a couple of showers and a few drops of rainfall expected here and there. And into inland parts of north Queensland, inland from Charters Towers, Georgetown and Hugh Endon, we could be seeing a few showers around those locations as well. Rainfall will continue into early Saturday morning, expecting those showers to ease off a little bit through Saturday before firing up again Sunday. And you can see some heavier falls expected to move into the Cassidy Coast through Sunday mid-morning and into early afternoon and then into the... Uh, uh, Daintree rain for us rather through Sunday afternoon and evening with heavy rainfall expected through Sunday night and into early Monday morning for the Daintree and then it's just a turbulent picture beyond Monday and Tuesday the 5th and the 6th of May respectively lots of moisture out there in the Coral Sea a lot of it's going to end up colliding with the extreme northern parts of uh, Queensland up around Lockhart River and Thursday Island this rainfall not going anywhere for far north Queensland's Cassidy Coast either with showers continuing through Tuesday and Wednesday before finally easing off around Friday or Saturday the 9th or 10th of uh, May respectively. The rainfall is going to end up being quite heavy for some of these locations and like I said some big time rainfall accumulations are possible. We're still not 110% sure how much rainfall is going to be coming through but we can have a safe bet for the, that for the first week of May so from now out until Wednesday night we're going to be seeing at least a couple of hundred millimetres for many locations along the Cassidy Coast. Now this is typical shower event there are stuff that we're seeing uh, here we're not talking about a rainfall event up in far north Queensland where there's widespread uh, moderate heavy falls and that's why you can see Cairns and a lot of other locations are actually expecting a lot less rainfall uh, compared to some of their neighbours such as Innisfail and Tully. I'd make a safe bet right now that Innisfail and Tully will both see about 150 or 200 millimetres of rainfall with the heaviest accumulations outside of Innisfail up around that 250, potentially even higher, up towards 300 or even 350 millimetres of rainfall. The majority of that coming through Friday night into early Saturday morning and then again Sunday night into Monday morning. Heavy falls also expected through Sunday and Monday up into the Daintree rainforest as well with about 150 millimetres coming through there. Not expecting too much rainfall into the Daintree through Friday and Saturday. But like I said, Cairns, not expecting too much in the way of rainfall because a lot of this is coming out of the southeast. The Yarba Peninsula is going to block a lot of it and they're only expecting about 50 millimetres in Cairns. And again, I think that's a really good number uh, to expect in the, uh, the Cairns area. The Atherton Tablelands communities there are going to be a big wild card. If you're closer to the coastline, you could be seeing up to 50 or even 75 millimetres. But if you're a little bit further inland, uh, I wouldn't bet your money on getting anything over 10 millimetres of rainfall. So again, it is going to be a little bit of a surprise on how much rainfall does come through for some locations, but it is classic far north Queensland stuff. Showers concentrated along the coastline. Very difficult to predict exactly what uh, rainfall is coming through at exactly what time and exactly how much rainfall is coming through. So it's a very difficult job as a forecaster right now. Uh, but again, rainfall is going to be solid on the coast, but as you get further inland or around the Cairns area, it's going to fall off quite significantly. Rainfall up to 100 millimetres is possible down to Cardwell and in the Hinchbrook Island area, 
but I'm not expecting significant falls further south of Hinchbrook Island. Ingham could pick up a little bit of rainfall, probably a little bit more than what they're expecting right now on the forecast models. There's about 30 millimetres coming in for Ingham. I wouldn't be surprised if they picked up triple figure accumulations through Friday night and into Saturday morning. Precedent certainly says that they're going to be getting uh, more than 30 millimetres of rainfall. That's for sure, especially with how their wet season has panned out. But locations along the coastline between Townsville down towards Bowen and even down towards Proserpine seldom more than 15 millimetres coming through there. Again, because this rainfall is coming in from the southeast, areas such as Townsville are going to be very protected from the rainfall. And whilst I'm getting quite a few comments saying that the rainfall is going to make it into Townsville just with how the birds and the ants are going down there, I just don't see how significant rainfall is coming through from the southeast and sweeping into the Townsville area. I just don't see how that is a possibility at this point in time, given the forecast setup that we have right now. But I'm uh, commenting purely based off the information that I'm seeing on my screen right now, and that being the rainfall and the winds and the direction of the winds coming through. So I could be very wrong on that. I'd be happy if I'm wrong again, Townsville. A couple of drops of rainfall right now wouldn't hurt, but anything over maybe a couple of dozen millimetres would definitely be quite problematic in there with, again, how their wet season has panned out. Good falls also down on the wet Sundays as well, anywhere between 25 to 50 millimetres, potentially a little bit higher around the Proserpine area, depending on what showers get jammed up around the Proserpine River uh, catchment. And some good falls are also possible around the Pioneer River catchment as well, out towards Yalbrew and Mount Gargan. Rainfall accumulations there could be approaching triple figures at times, especially with showers that are just going to be streaming through over the next week or so. And the rainfall isn't going to be going anywhere either. You can see 14-day rainfall accumulations looking pretty healthy, uh, all things considered, up in far north Queensland, with a further 150 millimetres expected into the second and the third week of May, which will lead far north Queensland to have a 500 millimetre start to May before the, May, uh, before the month is even halfway over. And out of the Coral Sea, it's just a very turbulent picture in uh, all. You can see rainfall accumulations over the next 14 days up to 600 millimetres on the Eastern Wear forecast modelling here. And the GFS actually calling for a little bit more rainfall with isolated pockets up to around that six or 700 millimetre mark as well out into the Coral Sea. So certainly some heavy falls possible. And again, heavy rainfall also expected over extreme far northern parts of Queensland. The GFS is also on board with some significant falls around the Cassiope Coast and really pushing into the southern parts of the Cassiope Coast as well as well, which is why I'm saying even though Ingham doesn't have much rainfall on the forecast. I reckon that they could be a bit of a runaway wildcard here and see a little bit more rainfall than what some of the forecast models are actually suggesting. And again, the wet season that they've just had certainly makes that a possibility. That's for sure. Precedence is an awful way to measure uh, how things are going to happen in the future in the weather world, but it can work wonders sometimes. And that's why I'm saying Ingham could be that wildcard location. A couple of decent falls also expected around Mataborough, uh, Winton, Huendon, and then out towards Claremont and Miranda, closer to the coastline in central and north central Queensland. Uh, falls between 20 and 30 millimetres out there, potentially as high as 50 millimetres. Not enough rainfall to cause flooding problems out there. And they're also not uh, dry enough to where 50 millimetres is a really substantial amount of rainfall. So I'm not overly concerned about this. But I imagine there'll be a couple of news agencies that pick up on this and say, again, disastrous floods coming in for southwestern Queensland. That is just not the case that's going to be happening. Now, just briefly before we turn the video a little bit more tropical and talk about tropical low 30 year, there is some rainfall coming through along the Sunshine Coast and the Gold Coast coast and into the Brisbane area as well over the next 14 days. The bulk of it's actually going to be coming through in the later parts of the for in the early parts of the forecast. Uh, you can see actually rainfall accumulations over the next week looking pretty solid with widespread falls between 25 and 75 millimetres along the Sunshine Coast and falls between 50 and 100 millimetres expected along the New South Wales coastline as well. A good couple of showers into the Brisbane metro area last night actually and with winds coming out of the southeast there is a chance of a few showers coming through later on tonight as well. Uh, showers and rainfall along the Brisbane area in the Sunshine Coast throughout tomorrow is going to be a bit of a wet one, and then showers and storms also along the New South Wales north coastline through Saturday and into Sunday, streaming up into the uh, southeast Queensland coastline through Saturday and Sunday as well. And we could be seeing a couple of heavier drops of rainfall Sunday night into Monday morning around Fraser Island. And then the showers do continue through Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday before finally drying off by the looks of things. There'll still be a few showers out and around into the second week of May, but they're not going to be as heavy as what we were seeing uh, at least in the next couple of days. So, again, there is a little bit of wet weather coming through for southeast Queensland and into northeast New South Wales. Keep that in the back of your head at this point in time. You're probably going to need the umbrella this week or just keep it an indoors week or for the remainder of this week into this weekend. But conditions should fine up around the 7th or the 8th of May uh, with a bit of high pressure building into the Tasman Sea, which will likely bring some finer conditions. Uh, again, this is kind of being powered by high pressure though onto the Tasman Sea, or at least the rainfall over the next couple of days. So that is a little bit contradicting. But again, it looks like that high pressure ridge might keep the, things, uh, the conditions a little bit drier across southeast 
East Queensland and into northeast New South Wales into the second week of May, but it's certainly going to be a bit of a wet start to May around Queensland and New South Wales. Time to go tropical now and up around the Northern Territory. I was shocked when I saw it this morning, but tropical low 30 is still cooking as we get in towards early May. It's situated just to the south of Indonesia at this top point in time. Actually, it's just situated uh, south of Bali. So imagine a couple of flights gone from Perth to Bali today. Going to be a little bit bumpy. That's for sure on the Bergen bus, that being Jetstar. Uh, conditions there not looking too good um, uh, out to sea. Plenty of thunderstorms to be talking about. But again, this is a tropical low that's not really causing any problems at all, or at least the remnants of a tropical low. But what I would just like to say is that this now being so far offshore from Western Australia and the Northern Territories, it's dragging all of the rainfall and the moisture away from it. And as such, we're not going to be seeing much rainfall anymore for the Northern Territory and into Western Australia. A few showers are possible here and there through Saturday night into Sunday morning. And again, showers piping up again Sunday night into Monday morning across the northeastern parts of the Northern Territory. And all in all, it could be a wet start to next week through Sunday, Monday and Tuesday across parts of the Northern Territory. But for the most part, good rainfall is going to be non-existent around the Darwin and the Catherine areas, the two places that have had one of the driest wet seasons on record. It really has felt like a dry season for a lot of locations up there. And they do desperately need a little bit of top-up rainfall to uh, get themselves through the dry season. But unfortunately, as you can see on the rainfall accumulation map here, over the next 14 days, there's not really an awful lot to be talking about. Yes, a few good drops here and there, as I have mentioned, around the northeastern parts of the Northern Territory. Nullanby and Cape Wessel will be looking at triple-figure rainfall accumulations over the next seven or eight days or so. But barely a few good drops around the Darwin area. Single-figure uh, rainfall accumulations there, and even down towards Catherine, there's nothing to be talking about whatsoever. And even if we push this out to a 14-day rainfall forecast, the numbers don't get any better across parts of the Northern Territory and even across towards Western Australia. They haven't been as unlucky as the Northern Territory with, what, with their dry season, but you can see in terms of the drought-like conditions, we should be seeing the top end of the Northern Territory completely free from every, any kind of drought conditions at this point in time. And they are still substantially above average at this point, in, uh, stand, uh, substantially below average in terms of soil moisture anomalies at this point in time. So again, it is quite sad to see how little rainfall at these locations have had uh, so far this uh, wet season and like I said it has really felt like a dry season for the northwestern parts of the Northern Territory. That will basically do it though for the tropics and any kind of tropical forecast this forecast update. Let's shift focus now down towards the southwest of Western Australia. We do have some wintry weather coming through and you can see that meaty cold front now beginning to develop across the southwest of WA. Plenty of cloud activity associated with this cold front as well and it's actually looking like a rather robust cold front at this point in time. Certainly looking like it's going to pack quite a punch but it's going to be the heat that pushes system away and weakens it off before it gets itself in towards Western Australia. Temperatures expected to climb substantially today. Easterly winds are going to bring to Perth into one of the warmest May days we've had in quite a few years with temperatures expected to hit 30 degrees by midday and probably pushing closer to 31 or 32 degrees as we get out towards 2 or 3 o'clock. So it's going to be a very warm start to May, that's for sure, literally with one of the warmest May days that we've had in the last decade or so happening on the 1st of May. Uh, and then those uh, temperatures will cool a little bit as we get later on into tonight. It's not going to be an overly cold night once again. Temperatures only expected into the high teens, if not the early 20s. And again, it's going to be a very quick uh, jump up in the temperatures by tomorrow. In fact, we're expecting again a pretty humid and a very windy top with winds out of the northwest coming in uh, through about midday tomorrow before those temperatures do begin to drop as that cold front begins to approach the southwest of Western Australia. That cold front will uh, weaken substantially actually by the time it gets itself to Western Australia. A couple of convective thunderstorms can be expected through mid tomorrow afternoon around the southwest caves and some heavier falls are possible here and there along the south coast through tomorrow afternoon and evening. Uh, that cold front not expected to make it up into the Perth metro area, at least the initial rainfall not expected to make itself up into the Perth metro area, reaching the southern suburbs by about uh, maybe 10 or 11 o'clock at night and then into the Perth metro area closer to midnight. And then that main cold front is going to come through by early tomorrow morning, uh, early Saturday morning around 6 or 7 o'clock and that's going to provide the uh, bulk of the rainfall that we're going to be seeing from that cold front and then a few showers expected on the back side of this system. It's not going to be as strong as what we were once estimated estimating with this cold front here, it is going to pack a little bit of a punch for the southwest capes if we do get some heavier rainfall associated with thunderstorms. But for the most part, rainfall isn't going to be significant. Wind speeds aren't going to be too significant either. The strongest wind gusts that I can foresee with the approaching cold front here are probably going to be up around that 60 or 70 kilometers an hour along the southwest capes and maybe pushing 50 or 60 kilometers an hour into the Perth metro area. So again, don't get your hopes up for a significant cold front. It's certainly not going to feel like one, that's for sure. At this point in time, every drop of rainfall for the southwest of West 
coast in Australia is good rainfall and it's needed. So we're going to take every single drop as a bit of a bonus at this point in time, but you can see rainfall accumulations not looking too healthy across the southwest uh, of WA. There will be a few good drops, like I said, along the south coast and into the southwest capes, but uh, generally speaking into the wheat belt, only a couple of millimetres expected here and there, and probably a maximum of about 10 millimetres coming into the Perth metro area. The forecast has just been slowly back down over the last couple of days, that high pressure ridge really beginning to build in the Great Australian Bight, and that's going to thwart this approaching cold front and keep it a lot further towards the south than what we were initially predicting it to be at. Anyways, pushing it forward later on into the forecast period, you can see the remnants of this cold front. It's going to be kind of a hopeless system and shattered that, uh, by all stretches of the imagination through Tuesday and Wednesday, reaching into South Australia where only a couple of drops of rainfall are expected across the southeast and a few drops expected through Victoria and into Tasmania where we will be seeing a little bit of better rainfall around Tasmania, but nothing in the way of significant cold front activity until about the 13th or the 14th of May, which has been consistent with the last couple of forecasts that we've ran. Again, I would just like to give this a few more days, but it does look like between the uh, 12th and the 17th of May, we might see some significant cold front activity for the southeastern parts of Australia. But again, a little bit too early to be commenting on this at this point in time. Anyways, that is all that I have time for today. A uh, special shout out, of course, to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. And again, their support is much appreciated. I could not run this show without them. That is all for me today. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.